Hi there, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Let's start a vegetable garden. Today we'll talk about the very basics. Well, hi there, if you're watching this video, I suspect that you're new to gardening and you want to find out how to start a vegetable garden. Um, my name is Scott. This is my teaching garden. It's a small vegetable garden in the backyard. I am in uh, suburbia and I live on a very small plot. I don't have a lot of space to garden in. Maybe that's like you, but there's enough space to grow some food. I garden here in zone 9A on the Texas coast. If you're new to gardening, you'll want to definitely research what USDA hardiness zone you live in. These zones are attached to the average uh, temperatures in your area. And um, you also uh, you know, want to research that a little bit. But what do you need to start a garden? A lot of people think it's expensive or it's difficult to do, but really you only need three things. You can see it's very sunny out today. I gotta wear my hat. That's the first thing you need to consider is the sun. What you want to do is look at the place where you're gonna put your garden in, like your backyard, uh, maybe a field you have, if you've got some property that someone's let you use. You want to pay attention to that and you want to do what I call a sun survey before you even start. Watch where your shadows fall. Most gardens need eight hours of full sun per day if you want to grow a broad variety of vegetables. Um, sometimes you can get by with a little less but I suggest trying to find a place where the sun falls on that spot for at least eight hours a day, preferably even more. If you've got a fence nearby or a bunch of tall trees, if you have a, a house on your land that casts a shadow, You'll want to take note of where those shadows fall in your lawn and put a little stake or a stick or, or a flag in the ground. And map out where those shadows fall. Now, here's another thing that if you're trying to get a garden in right now, you might miss out on. But it's best to, to do this sun survey all year long because as the seasons change, the sun shifts across your yard in a different way. And for example, in my garden, um, in the, in the wintertime, the shadows fall on my garden a little more intensely. Uh, I don't get as much sunlight. That's because my house shadow moves as the earth, as the tilt of the earth is in a different position around the sun. <clears throat> if you can't do that, that's okay. Just find a place where clearly the sun is shining on the ground for eight hours a day. My sun transits my property perpendicular to the street out front. It goes right straight overhead. In the on the south side, that's where the sun stays most of the time. So uh, yeah, it's a south side wall over there gets more sun. But look at this. That's the tall part of my house. It casts a long shadow right down into this part of the yard. I have a slanted side of the house though, where when the sun is low in the sky in the evening on that side, I get more sun down this way than I would here. And so my garden is on this side. Notice that little notch right there. That garden is shorter than this one. I have found that in the winter, that little corner right there casts a shadow that fits right into that little, that little spot. That wasn't planned, but it sure is neat to talk about. Anyway, I put my garden running north to south. Some people like their gardens running east to west. My thinking is since the sun transits over my garden perpendicularly, um, and I don't plant tall crops that will shade one another out, I tend to get all the sunshine I need. This garden back here gets full sun all day long, all season long, and I've got some other places in my yard where I have some very small raised beds that aren't as, uh, they're not as sunny, and so I have to take that in consideration. But that's your first thing. You want to put your garden in the right spot. If you build a garden and you go to all the effort, yet you placed it in an area with shade and it, and it doesn't get enough sun, well, your plants aren't going to thrive. Your plants need sun. The second thing you need to consider is your soil. Soil is the most important element of gardening, I think, because, you know, you can get sun. Um, you can't change the quality of the sunlight. It's just sunlight. Plants need it. But you can change the quality of your soil. It depends on where you're growing as to what type of garden you want to grow. If you've got good soil and it's relatively uh, loamy and it drains well, it's not heavy in clay nor heavy in sand, uh, count your blessings. You can garden right in the ground. Um, you can till that area up and uh, just start planting right in it right away. What I would suggest is you cut the grass down real low or whatever is growing there. Cut it down all the way as low as you can get it. Maybe even come in and weed whack it 
and get it almost down to bare dirt. Then you can do a process called double digging. What you do is you take your shovel and you dig a trench as deep as the shovel will go and you turn it over to the side. It's a lot of work, but hey, it's the best way, it's the proven way. Then come back and dig another, uh, dig that trench again, that's called double digging. Dig it deeper so you've got two shovel links deep. Now, once that trench that you've dug as wide as your garden is, or as long as your garden's going to be, you could go either way. Once you've got that trench dug twice as deep as the shovel, move over and dig another trench right next to it, one shovel, one shovel width. And whatever you pull out of there, turn that in to the trench you just dug, upside down. Turn that sod in and fill in that trench with that sod. Move over another, turn it in. Move over another, turn it in. And by doing that, what you're doing is you're taking all the sod, the seeds, the grass, and you're putting them underground and turning the whole area upside down. And you're turning up good soil that you can plant in right away. All that grass, all those weed seeds, they're down there. They're not going to bother you. In fact, they're good for the garden. They're going to uh, amend the soil with all that organic material. So that's one way you can start. Double dig a garden. Research their videos out there to show you how to do it. I can't double dig here because I'm out of space. I've already got my beds in. If you have lousy soil, like I do, I have a black gumbo clay. That's why my channel is called Black Gumbo. Clay is hard to plant in. It's hard to dig. You can't work with it half the time. Um, nothing really thrives in it. It's useful clay if you can break it up, but I can't garden directly in that clay. So what I did is I, well, I'll garden on top of the clay. I built a raised bed. You can see all these blocks back here. These are concrete blocks. You can use wood. I suggest at the minimum you go eight inches deep. These blocks are eight inches deep. And what you're going to do then is it's going to take some, some, some money to invest in some soil. At a local dirt yard, get you uh, enough uh, of the garden mix is what it's usually called. Some, some, some yards have a different name for it, but get a garden mix. Don't get topsoil. Don't get dirt. Get a specific garden mix because what you want in a raised bed is well-draining soil that has organic material in it and preferably some compost. That's what I started with here. And over time, what's going to happen is as you garden in that raised bed, the, the ground beneath is going to become part of your garden as the organic material works into your natural soil, your lousy soil, and it will improve that soil uh, and you'll get depth over time. So my garden beds, I can grow, you know, just about any root crop in here now because for the last eight years, everything I've put in this garden in, in terms of amendments like compost or fertilizer or, you know, minerals or things that are designed to break up clay, they work down into the natural soil. Good thing, man. Over time, your raised bed will only get better if you take care of it. When you establish a new, new raised bed, you don't have to do anything to the ground you're, you're putting your raised bed on. Just put your border around, build a border, wood or blocks or bricks or whatever. Put some cardboard down on top of the grass that's there and then fill it in with soil. It's that easy. You can see my soil has a lot of clay in it that's uh, these large pebbles. This happens every year when I when I break up the surface of my soil. But you can see that these, this clay breaks down pretty well. And well, that's the soil I have to work with, but you can see if you dig down underneath, it's more fine. I can feel moisture in there. It kind of holds together if I squeeze it. It's good soil. And so this, this is what I have to grow in. And as I amend the soil each year, and as you learn as a new gardener how to amend your soil, you'll only improve it. I suggest if you'd like to know how to garden uh, beyond the basics uh, that you follow my channel and channels like mine that teach people how to grow and raise beds. It's, uh, it's quite easy and it's very rewarding. So yeah, soil is the second element that you need to be concerned about when establishing a new garden. The soil is the, wow, well, I mean, it's probably the most important part. The third element that you have to be concerned about when beginning gardening is how are you going to water your garden? If you have a rental plot somewhere that doesn't have access to water, then you have to consider the fact that you're going to have to bring water in to water your plants. Plants need irrigation. Sometimes, especially in a raised bed like this, you can't rely on the rain alone. Some of you live in very dry areas that are, well, you don't get much rain. Here in the Gulf Coast, we get rain, tons of rain. Sometimes I don't have to water, but here it gets very, very hot. So hot that these plants transpire the water that that they take up out of the soil quickly and the soil evaporates even if you put the thickest layer of mulch on you've ever seen. Sometimes you have to water. I like to use just a basic watering can with water that comes off my roof into a barrel. That's the best water you can use. But for years I've just sprayed the, the garden with my hose. I still do that. In fact, I did it today. Um, 
sometimes you just got to broadcast a lot of water with the hose. City water is not going to hurt your plants. It might not be the best, but don't let people tell you you have to use filtered water or rainwater or natural source of water. That's the best, but come on, folks. People have been watering their gardens from the hose for years and years and years. If that's all you've got, count your blessings that you've got a water hose. You want to keep your plants happy and healthy and water them regularly. I've got these transplants that I put in and I need to keep them nice and watered because they're young baby plants and the bright sun is just beating down on them. You can't overwater. Plants will let you know when you're doing that. If you're new to gardening, there's a lot to learn. But I suggest you just try it. And if you make a mistake, well, that's how you learn. Don't be afraid to make mistakes in the garden. Nobody's got a perfect garden. And we all make the mistake of overwatering or underwatering. In fact, I've got some plants that were underwatered. Let me show you. Look at this poor pepper plant. See how these leaves are droopy and wilty? That one's probably not going to make it. Yeah, this plant in this tiny little cup has been sitting in this bright sun. And that means that this soil has dried out too quickly and stressed this plant out. That's how you learn. When you see your plants looking like this, get some water on them. Sometimes they'll recover and perk up. Sometimes they won't. That's kind of sad to me. But it happens. New gardeners, you're going to learn this lesson the hard way like every gardener does. But take heart. That's how we learn. And it's okay. The next thing you'll want to do is decide, do I want to start from seeds? Or do I want to go to the store and buy starts? That celery right there was started in this garden by someone else. I bought those as starts. These collard grains right here, I grew those from seed. You can do both. It's real easy to start from seed. I'll show you how to sow some seeds today. And I'll show you how to plant starts that you buy from the store. Or maybe you grew them under the, the grow lights. If you, if you happen to get a, a set of grow lights, you can grow your own seeds into starts and get a head start. Let's just assume you're brand new and you buy some things at the store, some seed packets and maybe some tomato plants or some pepper plants. I'll show you how to plant those. Here we have a jalapeno pepper, a Jedi jalapeno, and I'm going to plant it right there. Whenever you lay out your garden, um, as, as a new gardener, uh, new gardeners tend to put, put more plants in the space they have than they should. I like to plant my tomato plants and pepper plants at least two feet apart preferably like way over there a little bit further apart and that's because the roots like to go out and forage for resources in the soil and if you've got them too close together they're going to compete with one another they're going to shade one another out that little plant right there will get huge and you'll you'll find all these plants in this garden bed will be touching if I let them get that large so plant your spacing or space your plants about two feet apart if you're doing these starts with tomato plants and pepper plants if you've got a squash plant give it at least three or four feet because those things get enormous. So let's go ahead and plant this. If you're, if you're starting with a store-bought start or something like this, you'll just want to gently squeeze the container and lift the plant out by pushing on the bottom. And you can see the root system here. What we want to do is if we see roots circling around, you want to gently tease them apart. You don't have to do much on this one. It looks, it looks like it's pretty good. What we're going to do is just dig a hole about the depth of the of the plug here you can see I've got some clay in here a little bit of clay has been brought up in this garden bed over the years that's all right I'm just gonna dig a hole I'm picking out particular weeds I know I don't want in my garden bed and I'm gonna get about about as deep as the plug that'll work and then you just backfill. There's nothing more difficult than that. Now some gardeners will amend the hole with fertilizers, but you don't have to do that. If you're just starting, put the plant in the ground and worry about fertilizer later. What we'll do is we'll water this in next. That's the next step, water it in really well. And once it's watered in, this plant will grow for you. You will want to fertilize with um, a liquid fertilizer periodically according to the instructions on the packet I tend to, to uh, give my plants fertilizer once every three weeks and it's as easy as putting it in the watering can and pouring it on the soil all right let's let's get this one watered in 
always, as a new gardener and as an old gardener, label your plants. I'm going to put this cup here with the name on. I'm going to weigh it down so it doesn't blow away until I can get a, a label. Let me know what these plants are because you will forget. Trust me, you will forget. I have forgotten more plants. I can tell you, it's, it's just something that happens. All right. You can see here in this garden bed, these pepper plants are spaced three feet apart. And I guarantee you when they get larger, they will be touching each other. I've got a space there for some other plants and in between I can put some smaller plants that don't mind a little shade. Right here I've got some beets planted that uh, won't get very tall. Yeah, this bed is almost completely planted. We've got a few more things to do over here though. I've got this mountain roaster pepper. I started this from seed. We're going to put this one in as well. Again, look at, oh look at those earthworms. That's a good sign if you've got big, big juicy earthworms in your garden, that's a sign of good soil. So, I'm pleased with that. We're going to put this mountain roaster pepper right here. Lots of earthworms in that soil. That's good. You want to saturate that soil so that all the air pockets down there that we've created by digging a hole get themselves cleaned up. Let's get that worm into some moist soil so he'll have a quick way to get down below. Let's cover him up a bit. Come on, fella. You need to live. I'm going to start squash from seed. I'm going to show you how to start squash from seed. You look at the soil and you think, that's not going to do well for growing anything in. It's not fine enough. But like I showed you earlier down below, it's pretty fine. Squash seeds are large. They're really easy to start. The thing about squash is they need some warm weather for them to come up. So I'm going to put two plants here. And we might have to uh, we might have to thin them because this little area is about four by four square feet. You can only get two squash plants in a four by four square foot area for most squashes. If you get some miniature squash, well, you know, good for you. But for these guys I'm growing here, no, they're going to grow big. I'm going to demonstrate how to plant squash seeds. What we do is get us a nice area of finer soil, get the chunks out of the way. So what I can do is dig down and find some nicer soil and make me just a little mound right here. Doesn't need to be a big mound. And I'll do the same over here where I'm going to plant this other one. Find some nice soil, move the big rocks and chunks out of the way. Just get me some soft soil. Now here's a rule of thumb when planting seeds. You plant a seed twice as deep as it is long. Look at these squash seeds. See how they look like pumpkin seeds? Those are about a half inch about a half inch long each. What I'm going to do is take two of these seeds in each mound, <clears throat> maybe three. And what I'm going to do is shove them in about an inch because they're a half inch. So we want to shove them in twice as deep as they are long. Just shove them in and cover them over. And there you go. That's easy, right? Keep them separated. When these come up in about a week after we water them in, we will let the three plants in each mound grow until we can see which one is the strongest plant. Then what we're going to do, snip the other two down at the ground. That may seem wasteful, but that's how you get the best, uh, the best plant, the healthiest plant, the strongest plant, and the best opportunity for success. It's called thinning. Thinning is something gardeners need to learn to do. You don't need to feel sorry for your plants. Uh, you don't need to feel like it's a waste. As you thin, you're improving your chances of su success. So that's how easy it is to start seeds. Let's water these in. I am using rainwater at the moment from my rainwater barrel. It's got some nice algae growing in it. That's just more organic material for the garden. So once again, this is for new gardeners and it's just the basics, just to get you started. There's a whole lot more to learn in gardening and I'm not covering even all of the basics. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. But I think just by watching gardeners garden, you can learn. I think just by talking through the basics with a, or listening to somebody talk through the basics, you can glean other things as well as you watch what they do. I've been gardening here on this land, this uh, quarter acre plot in suburbia for a very long time. And so I may be forgetting something. If you have questions about gardening, and you want to know some things, drop me a comment. 
I read all my comments. And if I get a good question, I'll be sure to answer it. And follow me, subscribe to our channel, and watch what we do here. Learn how to garden and grow your own food. There's nothing better. If there was a fourth basic element in vegetable gardening, it would be weeding. You can see here, I've got some weeds coming up. This is called nut sedge, and I hate it. You wanna to try to get all the weeds out as soon as you see them. You're not gonna get them all, and that's okay. But if you try to get them all, you'll be ahead of the weeds. The problem with weeds is they grow like crazy. See, I'm not doing much, I'm not getting the roots out. Uh, they grow like crazy. I flamed this garden down just a few days ago and these have already popped right back up. Uh, these nut sedge will send runners down in the soil. And the problem with weeds is they, they compete with your plants, especially if they get too thick. Now, just a few weeds like here in the holes, it's no big deal. But then they reproduce like crazy and they outpace your plants. So weeding is always the biggest chore. If you don't have mulch on your garden, you see I've got mulch over here in this tomato bed but I don't have mulch in this bed just yet. Let me show you a nice tool to get these weeds to chop them off. This tool is called a scuffle hoe, and it's, or you can also call it a stirrup hoe, and it's got this blade. Let me show you how it works. It runs right underneath the surface of the soil, and so you just cut that weed down at the root. So you can just work it in your soil just like so, and chop your weeds. Just leave your weeds laying on the surface, let the sun dry them out, and they'll die. There's one there. All right. I like the scuffle hoe. It's really easy. You can use a traditional hoe if you wanted to, but I find this, I've learned that this is one of the tools I really like if I have bare soil. Got some weeds in there and my celery. All right. Well, we've got some things planted today. I'm happy. Woo. A little bit warm today. Well, there we go. Some basics, some very basic gardening information if you've never grown a garden before. Get you some sun, make sure that you don't have a lot of shade. Get you some good soil, not topsoil, not dirt, not clay, not sand. Get a good gardening mix and uh, or get a good loamy soil that's native and grow in it. Just start growing. Don't worry about all the amendments. Don't worry about all the things that, you know, the square foot gardeners say or the back to Eden gardeners say. Just try some gardening. And third, make sure you have access to water. And we added a fourth, keep on top of weeding. I've showed you how to plant a few things and how easy it is to plant some of the more popular things. Well, if you wanna know some more, please subscribe to my channel and watch all my other videos. I'll show you how to get into gardening and do some deep dives and learn some real interesting things about soil, about uh, what kind of amendments you should bring into your garden about how to start seeds and how to prune and how to grow fruit trees small, how to grow grapes and all kinds of wonderful things. If you like that kind of content, if you're interested in beginning gardening, welcome. I uh, hope that you'll join our channel. I hope that you will uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And I hope that you have happy gardening. Thanks a lot. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.